All right, so let's look at the two rubrics. We'll start with essay rubric A for essays not involving research. So there is a scale that one can do um, from excellent to unacceptable. So excellent obviously is the best, very good, acceptable, poor, inadequate, and unacceptable. There are also different categories that I'll be grading in. So I'll be grading for content. This is a category that weighs 35%. It regards critical thinking, development, originality, creativity, use of examples and title. Organization, so that's 30%. And I'll ask the questions, do you have an intro? Do you have a conclusion? Do you have a thesis? Clarity of purpose? Do you have topic sentences, concluding sentences, transitions, coherence, and structure? I'll also be looking at style. So this will be 10%. It will be things like word choice um, and your writing skills. I'll be looking at grammar for 20%. Basically, I'll be checking for any grammar errors that you may have. And lastly, MLA format for 5%. I'll be looking at your formatting and making sure that you follow the general MLA format. Do you have the right font and font size? Are you using double spaced? Are you using one inch margins, headers? etc. All that good stuff. So that's approximately what I'll be looking for on your essays. Now essays with research are a little bit different. So as you can see, essays with research have lots of the same categories and they have the same scale from excellent to unacceptable. Um, they have content, organization, style, grammar, MLA or APA format, but they also have more. So I'll be expecting that for essays with research that you have documentation and lists. So specifically the works cited or reference pages. That will be the proof that you did the research, right? And documented the research. I'll also be looking for documentation of in-text citations for 7%. What are in-text citations? That's when you cite in the body of the essay, when you quote, when you paraphrase, when you make a reference to something, that's an in-text citation. Um, you're integrating your sources into your essay, right? So we'll be grading for that as well. And then I'll be grading for sources for 7%. The quality of sources and number of sources. So did you, did you look up a bunch of sources for this essay and um, enough sources, the number of sources I wanted you to look up? And are those sources actually good sources? Are they sources that um, it looks like you just Googled and, and picked, are they sources that look like the first uh, thing that popped up on Google? Or are they sources that look like you gave a little bit of time and thought into what you're, what you're writing about? Okay, so those are the categories that you'll be graded in. Um, and of course, you can make, you can make uh, excellent or unacceptable grades in each of those categories. So anytime you turn in a essay for this class, I'll be looking at the essay on this rubric using, using these criteria and this scale. All right, 
So lastly, we have the Other Documents folder. So what's in this folder? So there's a few documents here. We'll look at them one by one. The first we have the Copyright Notice. So all this means, <clears throat> all this Copyright Notice is, is just a notification that what you look at in this course may be copyrighted um, and so it's not to be spread uh, to other people. Frequently asked questions. So we also have um, some frequently asked questions here. So question one, do I really need a textbook? So the answer is yes or no. You need to purchase Norton Intro to Lit because it has the readings in it. Many students will want to have their handout from 1301, but if you have a different hand, or I'm sorry, handbook from 1301, but if you have a different handbook than what was available at the bookstore, it should be fine. You need the 2021 version of MLA and the 2020 version of APA. Okay, so I will say, so when they say, firstly, when they say handbook, that means the little Siegel handbook. Um, so you probably do already have that from 1301, um, because in English 1301, um, that's one of the assigned textbooks, and uh, it has been for some time because WCJC uses Norton. <clears throat> so, um, uh, for uh, otherwise, for the Norton Intro to Lit, so I have assigned readings from that book. However, many of those readings can be found online. Um, I personally like audiobooks to supplement reading, um, especially if you're good at multitasking. I encourage that. Um, but some of the readings probably can't be found on, online. So if you don't get the textbook, um, you may not uh, be, be, you might not have access to all of the information that we will be reading in this course. Um, I will say that Previous versions are probably fine. I think that you probably can get away with looking at a previous version because um, the content really doesn't change that much. Um, it does say here that you need the 2021 version of MLA and the 2020 version of APA, but these can be easily found online as well. So I don't think you need a brand new textbook for that purpose. All right, next question. Why did I get a zero for a discussion grade? If you do not post for a discussion topic, you'll earn a zero for your discussion grade. As simple as that. Grading, where are my grades? So you can access your grades by clicking on the My Grades link on the left-hand menu of Blackboard. Generally, I grade essays within two weeks of the due date. So here's the My Grades. And when you click on that, it should take you to see your grades. Blackboard, <laughs> I'm a little confused on how to post a discussion or access the quizzes. Um, so as a student, you can access on-demand help for Blackboard at the Blackboard on-demand student videos. So that's this link that you can click on. Um, the URL for copy pasting is this one. Or you can visit college's support page by clicking on the help link on the course menu. So in general, you can access those, those um, support links, but also um, in these videos, I'm gonna be walking through um, how to access everything. So hopefully that should give you the initial idea and then if you have any problems after that, uh, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to contact those 
um, help desks. All right, next, smart thinking in Blackboard. All right, so I don't know if most of you are aware of this, but um, WCJC students have access to a online tutoring service called Smart Thinking. Um, and it is geared towards freshman level classes in particular, um, though there, there are some other core classes included. Um, so if you're struggling with mathematics, writing, general chemistry, physics, biology, or introduction to human anatomy and physiology, um, accounting, economic, Spanish, or statistics, uh, you can access this smart thinking website um, and they can give you feedback for that. Uh, you can get live tutoring, but you can also submit essays for review by the tutor. So obviously uh, it's best to do this as far in advance as possible. So uh, finish your essay early, submit it to smart thinking, and you may be able to get feedback before uh, you even have to turn it in, and then you'll make a better grade because you turned in something that was already reviewed by somebody who uh, edited it for you or gave you that those editing, uh, that proofreading and editing advice. Um, so that's an option, and you get that for free, so I recommend that you try it out. All right, the next thing is just an article. It's called Bad Writing Costs Businesses Billions. Um, and it's just a quick, interesting read about why um, writing well might be um, not, just, not just something to help make people understand you, um, but also um, how that lack of understanding um, might actually be costly for you. So basically, um, it's not just a chore to raid through badly written memos, emails, and other lous lousy business communications. This inefficiency costs us insane amounts of money. So think about the last time, um, if you have a boss, the last time you might have emailed your boss how much time it took to email them, how much time it took for them to get back to you in email. Um, and maybe, maybe you had a miscommunication. How much time did it take for you to clear up that miscommunication? Um, maybe it was something as silly as a typo, and that typo led to a totally different interpretation of what you were saying. Or maybe it was just um, something unclear, something that you weren't specific enough about, something they weren't specific enough about, um, and it led to a, a, a tragic miscommunication um, that ended up costing money. So basically, when you ask yourself something like, well, why is English a required course? It's because any institution, like businesses, anything you do, any activity in life, right? Um, will require reading and writing, um, and that reading and writing can save, can save you money in the end. Time, effort, all of that, right? It can save you a bunch. All right, the next document, allowing mixed content in browsers. All right, so essentially, sometimes, you will have, um, you will encounter blocks. So Chrome, <clears throat> specifically version 21 or later, blocks mixed content. So if you have a problem where your browser is blocking information for this course, um, you'll have to follow these instructions to allow um, for that content. So basically, um, it says that there's a shield in the upper right-hand corner, and um, you click the shield and load, and that should allow you to see any of that content. If you use Internet Explorer, um, 
it might block in uh, mixed content as well. So there's another method here for Internet Explorer 9 or later, and then another for Internet Explorer 8 or earlier. And then there's Firefox, which has the same thing. So you can allow mixed content this way. And Safari, um, Safari should not have that problem. Um, but my initial recommendation is if you seem to not have access to any of the course content, the first thing you might try is switching browsers. I've had this problem before where I couldn't access something through the WCJC portals. I switched browsers from one to the other and it worked fine on the other browser when it didn't work fine on the browser before. So I recommend trying those types of things out. Switching around browsers is a, is a good bet. All right, next, computer skills and literary skills. And these look like the same links, so yeah. Uh, computer skills and literary skills websites. So here are some websites that might be able to help you, um, help you specifically learning, um, learning things like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Publisher, Access, Microsoft Office in general, right? Um, there's also um, online tutorials that are for the uh, WCJC library, uh, research guide tutorials. Um, all of those tutorials can be accessed through these links. So if you have any trouble um, using Word or using one of the websites, you might be able to just look at a tutorial and solve your problem. So um, this will likely happen to many of you unless everybody everybody in class is really good at Microsoft Office already, which um, some of you will be, but some of you might not be. So, um, but Microsoft Office is gonna be really important to use, uh, as well as the other online uh, softwares that we're using. So um, these would be good to check out if you feel uncomfortable about uh, using Microsoft Office products at all. You also can get on-site assistance. So if you want to come um, come to campus um, and learn about any technology topics from the librarians, uh, they cover Blackboard, College Email, Microsoft Office, and OneNote. Um, and you can contact them directly to set up that appointment. Also regarding citations, so this is a website that you can use um, when wondering about what style, how to, how to cite sources in a given style. So there's APA, MLA, and Chicago Manual of Style all at the WCJC website. There's also um, this citation page to help with citations. And there's this Blackboard portal for help and resources. And finally, these are some links to library resources and external resources. Um, some of these are pretty good. Purdue Online Writing Lab has a lot of good, a lot of good things to look at if you're wanting to know about uh, proper formatting and citations. And then um, finally, there are some tutorial videos here through the UH, not U of H, through the WCJC library website. Um, so if you wanted to watch some video tutorials, you could access those. All right. So that is everything from the other documents folder. So we have essentially gone through everything in our Get it, Getting Started folder, Academic Honesty, publisher information, quizzes, rubrics, and other documents. What I would recommend uh, focusing on this week, um, this first week of class, um, you want to do all of the quizzes, um, get those out of the way, and then um, you might look at the rubrics just to make sure uh, that you understand how 
uh, essays will be graded this semester so that there's no confusion there. But otherwise, that's it for the Getting Started folder. And next time, I'll be looking at Module 1, the short story module. So I'll see you next time.